when you're doing behavioral management, when you always got to think the ABCs. We always look at the we tend to look at the behavior and the consequences. That's our natural tendency. You know, your your kid does something, you either reward or punish. You know, but uh, with brain injury, you really want to look at the antecedents. Was the person tired? Did they just take medication? Were they in an overstimulating environment? Did they just have three hours of therapy? What's usually happening before the problem occurs? So you look at those antecedents, you identify behavior, you look at what are the consequences of accidentally being rewarded, what's happening after it happens, and then you come up with a behavioral plan. Now, any behavioral plan, you want to make sure it's well structured, consistent, because there's a brain injury, you need lots of repetition, it needs to be the same way, consistent, and have a lot of repetition, and specific to a particular uh, behavior. So you know, you gotta focus it. Um, you wanna make sure it's practical, it has a functional value, and focus on reward. We all, you know, everyone, no one believes it. They always think punishment and consequences and negative consequences seems to be the best way to change behavior, but it's really uh, positive reinforcement has been shown over and over again, the best way to change a behavior. And of course, if it's not meaningful, it's never gonna work. Uh, now, I know uh, that this is gonna, the rest of the speaker is gonna talk a lot more about the cognitive remediation part, but I'm gonna go over real briefly uh, some aspects of cognitive remediation. First thing you wanna do, if someone's not uh, able to shower, cook, uh, do their checkbook, whatever it is, you gotta have an understanding uh, and, uh, of why, what's involved in that task. There's always motor skills, reasoning skills, there's perceptual abilities that are all going on, and you gotta say, what's involved with this? So you can figure out where the person's breaking down. Now, once you do that, there's different, way, different ways to address the problem. One is direct remediation. So if a person's having uh, processing speed problems, you just keep working their processing speed. You just take the skill and you practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it, practice it. Drill and repetition, drill and repetition. And the way the brain works is the more you do any activity, that particular skill gets better. It doesn't generalize, but if you do word puzzles, and you do word puzzles all the time, the parts of the brain that have to do with doing word puzzles will strengthen. You're gonna get more uh, nerve growth there. Doesn't mean you're gonna be good at maybe other verbal skills, but you'll be great at word puzzles. So, uh, you, but you can remediate some certain skills directly through, that, through the drill and practice. Changing the environment, we often forget about this. Often we wanna change the person or fix the brain injury. A lot of times you gotta work around, you know, uh, put signs and pictures up or, or different color coding. Sometimes um, someone who has a visual neglect, they'll actually put a little line along the wall so the person knows to look for the line. So there's a lot of environmental interventions that our therapists are incredibly skilled at coming up with ideas to help change the environment so they can more naturally go in the environment. There's, um, just as a little side, there's this big article uh, and research just came out where people with, uh, with severe dementia, they find do really well in an environment that's very stimulus response. A lot of, um, you know, you press a button and the ball goes up in the air uh, because you're, you're getting that control of your environment and uh, immediate response and calms people down. So uh, it's probably one of the, uh, it's overlooked a lot, probably the more effective ways to address cognitive problems. We work for working around, uh, so here's my jet lag, working around a, a problem. So uh, that might be a, a book, that you write all, you know, a memory book, shopping list. I have 50 billion little um, note pieces of paper all over my desk, but helps compensate for any kind of cognitive difficulties. So uh, that's a big piece. How do you work around the problem? Sometimes compensatory strategy is just uh, being in a quiet environment and, set, and um, you know, get, turn the TV off and um, having your wife say, look at me, I'm talking to you. It's like, that's a compensatory strategy. Psychotherapy. Um, Giving the family education is a huge piece, understanding what's going on and why it's happening. Stress, it's so stressful what, what you must be going through. Uh, just learn how to manage that stress. If you were, um, you know, before handling stress pretty well, now you're gonna have to be super expert in, in stress management. Um, and one of the big things you do in, in, in therapy is changing the way you think about things. Uh, this is what's been, no longer do we do psychoanalysis where you sit on the couch, we talk about your childhood for weeks and weeks and weeks and years and years and years and years. Um, so what we try to look at is what, how does someone think uh, about or perceive about uh, something? So somebody who believes that the world is out to hurt them and that things always go wrong with them no matter what, if they get an injury, they're not gonna handle it very well. Uh, they're gonna see, oh, here's another example of the, uh, the world uh, shitting on me and hurting me and there's gonna be depression to follow. Um, so we need to challenge those beliefs because 
thoughts are going to lead to feelings, which leads to behaviors, which leads to consequences, which strengthen the belief system. So, uh, you know, if, you're, if you believe that um, no one likes you and you walk into a new room and uh, you're, you're going to be very focused on people rejecting you, you'll eventually be rejected, which is just going to strengthen your belief that everyone rejects you. So you've you got to challenge those things so you can change the behavior. So um, that's a big piece of therapy. Okay. So just put it all together here to summarize. A neuropsychological evaluation would, uh, could give you a baseline of how somebody is functioning. So you can see where they're at one point and then retest and see where at another point. See if they're improving or, or getting worse. Um, we can help differentiate between what's emotional personality and what is actually from the brain injury. Um, we help with discharge planning, vocational planning, and educational planning. Uh, can someone go home with help? Um, do you need someone 24 hours uh, a day? Uh, we can help add our input because of the, um, our testing. We help um, through our uh, neuropsychological testing and cognitive strengths and weaknesses and, and our uh, thoughts on what's the different causes to the problem are could help uh, re uh, develop our, our uh, cognitive remation plans, um, could help clarify the diagnosis, and of course address the behavioral and emotional problems as they occur. So that's neuropsychology in a nutshell. Thank you very much. And I guess questions uh, oh, at the end. And uh, if you do, if you are interested, there's the uh, picture of the brain and the uh, different uh, remediation, cognition strategies. Okay? Thank you.